All right. I started talking and I forgot to press the go live button. So it's been a while. Um, yeah, let me know if uh, this is live. It should be. I was all ready with the countdown timer. I've been sitting here waiting. Anyway, I'm Simply Sherry. I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona. So it's about 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. And let me know where you're watching from and what time it is over there. If it's uh, afternoon, evening, good evening. If it's afternoon, good afternoon. And also good morning. I am, um, I've been on YouTube for a while. So probably about 10 years. Four of those years, it was just a hobby. And the last, last six years, been really trying to um, uh, give more value as I help you get organized. And I did take a break for about a year and a half, if you've noticed in my videos, but I'm back here. And then I was checking out in my lives um, when I did a live live stream, and that was last December. And so I'm glad I'm back. I've been telling myself that I want to do a live. And so I'm thinking of doing a live stream once a month with just me. And then a second time in the month, I will be having a guest. And I actually have three guests in line starting November, December, and then I have one in February. I might still look for one for January, or I might just do two lives by myself. Now, the reason I was uh, not sure, um, going to the comments, I wasn't sure if... Um, how to do these lives because I didn't know what to talk about. Okay. Hi, Katie. Welcome from Scottsdale, Arizona, just in my uh, neighborhood. So I'm, I'm sure it's around 430 there. And, and by the way, the temperature, I just checked because it's like 86 degrees. So 86 degrees end of October. Uh, we usually don't totally cool down till after Halloween. So that's what I always told myself. So I don't um, um, pretend that it's going to be cooler in September when it really is not. All right, Nella, Nella Laz. Oh, is that your screen name? Nella, welcome. Oh, thank you. I'm sure you look good too. Uh, so today uh, we're going to talk about overcoming overwhelm to start getting organized. And I came up with this topic um, because I took a poll um three weeks ago and I, I did a little poll like for the last three weeks and I finally came up with an idea. I wasn't taking a poll in order to do a live stream. I was just taking a poll just to find out where um, where people were feeling like they're at. Okay, welcome Karen Hankerson. Wow, from South Carolina. Is that Aiken? Aiken, Aiken. And you know what? I did plan a trip to South Carolina this past summer. I was going to do the whole like kind of area over here because I've never been. And so I had to postpone it till another time because I just did, I did like, I think eight trips this year and the pocket was not so full anymore. So I have to, I have to catch up again. Okay. Thanks, Karen. Well, welcome. Welcome from South Carolina. It must be like 630 there. Is that right? Okay. So I took this poll and look at this poll. <laughs> okay. My question was, what's your biggest obstacle right now in getting organized? Okay. Hold on. Before we start, I did say in our community post to bring your favorite drink. So mine is mango right now. Mango drink. Okay. I usually get the Filipino brand. I'm Filipino, but this is a great brand too. So that's my favorite drink today. I'm not going to get anything bubbly because you know, don't want to burp on live TV or anything else like that. You know what I mean? Let me take a drink. Are you guys drinking anything right now? 7.34 p.m. Oh, wow. You're like Eastern time. Okay. Well, this was the poll. What's your biggest obstacle right now in getting organized? And you can see that 115 people voted. Okay. Cran grape. Ooh, haven't had that in a while. I might have to put that on my list to get next week. All right, good old water. Yes, I actually have water too. This is for when I get really thirsty. Okay, I carry that bottle everywhere. It's like my security blanket. Okay, so lack of motivation, 23%. Time constraints. Okay, can you relate to any of these um, answers for this poll? Not sure how or where to start. And then overwhelmed in general. 
and more urgent things needed atten need attention in my life. And so for me, I was like, man, the thing that stops me from getting organized a lot of times is uh, time constraints. So sometimes I put out these polls and I think, oh, this is what people are feeling or, you know, uh, what's going on in their lives right now. But it's not. And it came out to overwhelmed in general, 43 percent. So that's about, let's see, 115 votes times 43 percent. OK, is. That's like 50 people. OK, 49.45. I, I don't think we can have 0.45 of a person. So let's just say 50 people are just overwhelmed in general. And it just really made me think, huh, that's that's really interesting um, that one, I was completely wrong in thinking what people were feeling. And then just thinking about what is it like to just be overwhelmed in general, OK? And so then my second poll with 103 votes here, you see, is if you are not feeling overwhelmed in general, would you be able to organize a space in your home? And it said yes. So look at that, 68% so with, with the sunglasses, feeling good about life. No, a little bit sad, not sure. OK, that is valid because you're not sure if being overwhelmed is actually stopping you from getting organized. Maybe you just really don't know how to get organized. I don't need to get organized. <laughs> yeah, that's never me either. My home is organized. Wow. I say amen that to that. OK, I feel like um, at times I would say this, at times I don't. OK, so 68% of 103 votes said yes, they would be able to get organized if they were not feeling overwhelmed. So that started uh, me, started getting me to think that, you know, I want to talk about how to actually overcome overwhelm or one way. It is not the magic pill. It may not work for you, but um, maybe what I'm going to share today might be too complicated, but it's what has helped me overcome overwhelm in a very practical way. You know, there's probably deeper things that make us overwhelmed, but we're not going to totally get into those things tonight. Okay. What are you overwhelmed about that is hindering you from organizing a space? Oh, hold on. I pressed that. Um, okay. Thank you, Tess. No more Tess. Um, I had to undo the noise cancellation in my earphones because I can barely hear myself, so I might be shouting. Okay, what are you overwhelmed about that is hindering you from organizing a space in your home? And I thought it would be finances because that's what overwhelms me almost all the time. I don't care what stage in life I've been in. I've just always felt like finances overwhelm me. Um, so 19%, the future, 70 votes, the future, 7%, family, 7%. And that could be like taking care of kids, taking uh, care of elderly parents, you know, whatever, uh, family fights, whatever's going on, okay? Um, all right, so they're the future family. Day-to-day uh, -to -day schedule was the whopping 57% and then work 10%. Because for me, it would be finances, next would be work. And so what I realized, I'm like, you know what, I don't, typically get overwhelmed with my day-to-day -day schedule. One is because um, I've been uh, honing how to do my daily schedule since I was in college, because in college I was forced to. In high school, you just kind of go with the flow. You know, you got to go to class all day, then maybe you have extracurriculars, you go home for dinner, do your homework, and it's kind of the same uh, schedule most of the time. But when college comes around, you just kind of have this open schedule. You can go to class or you cannot go to class and et cetera, right? And when we work, it does force us to, let's say, uh, go to work at a certain time and leave at a certain time. And so there's things that are naturally built into our schedule that forces us to stick to it, right? But then when you're working from home like me, I do have a job and I do work from home. Um, it, it makes you, it forces you to either be, totally not scheduled and the overwhelm creeps in or it forces you to really hone those skills. And so what I've seen in my life is that I've honed that skill and I want to share that with you today as one way of really overcoming overwhelm. Okay. Uh, Karen says, I think there's a way to do this. Hold on. Okay. 
Karen, I'm overwhelmed, but I don't have the strength. Then finances, yes, I, I, I get it. There are times when life is life is just overwhelming, and then there's other times where if we could just tweak something, make something just a little bit better, it takes it could take care of enough that you can overcome that overwhelm. And that's what I'm going to try to do or show you today in a very practical way. Okay, this is like my friend here, 808 Blessed One. She lives in Hawaii. In Hawaii, That's why she says aloha. And um, yes, we would rather say aloha in person there in Hawaii. Okay, so next, um, let's go here. Okay, that's just a reminder of what my poll was. was is it finances, the future, family, work? <laughs> I saw this picture and I was like, I have got to use this picture because that's how I feel. We get all those cups of coffee. They even look like espressos, maybe. Mine would be a cappuccino. Look at all those papers. Oh, paper is my nemesis. And you just feel buried. Like there's, it's just never ending, right? After you hit a deadline, there's a new deadline. There's a new project. There's a new, you know, skill that you've got to get better at there's new people that you have to meet all this stuff that's great karen thank you uh for persevering you know and and for sharing um okay so my first tip do you guys like it this way i got this okay the first tip is create a daily schedule okay Let's take a deep breath. Um, that can mean anything. And there, there's so many ways to create a daily schedule. Okay. This, I like this picture because I'm like, oh, how beautiful it would be to write my schedule with this blooming bouquet of uh, roses that are already in a vase. And it's only 10 in the morning. And I have my nice cup of coffee and everything is set out for me. Well, you know. Honestly, my life doesn't look like that. But um, there's so many ways to create your schedule, okay? You could do it hard copy. Like right now, I'm in this kick of the happy planner, okay? So I have this, okay? And I actually have the, the box layout, uh, vertical layout, I think. There's also online, so I do keep some of my schedule online, but that's that's not the point. Okay, the point isn't whether should you do hard copy, soft copy, should it be on a wall, um, there by your launch pad or command center as you go out the door, should it be on the side of your fridge? Okay, those little details is not, um, we're, that's jumping steps. The first step is to really think about, um. is to really think about your schedule, okay? Okay, so let me look at this. Um, uh, we're going to get a little bit uh, maybe heady or brainy here right now. Thank you to all of you who are watching. I see that there's a few people here on the live stream. Okay, a schedule is a plan for carrying out a process or procedure, giving lists of intended events and times, okay? Okay. Similar words are plan, program, timetable, okay? And my intention in this live stream and in the future live streams is that, you know, you can watch my videos and you can see like how I organize things and kind of talk through them and a little bit like a vlog style. Maybe I'll give some tips. But when we are doing this live stream, I really want you to think about yourself, okay? To put yourself first, to, to really practice that muscle of self-awareness because when you really become self-aware of your how you tick how you work how your brain processes things then that really is kind of for what i see the the foundation of uh many things but one of them is getting organized because you're not getting organized for me and you're not getting organized for your neighbor you're not getting organized for your mother-in-law you're not getting organized so that you can have a party. Organization is really about caring about yourself and your environment. And I, I really believe that. And, you know, I'm sure many of you here on this live stream, 
you know what it's like when your house is a little bit chaotic or maybe it's in complete chaos it's hard to think it's hard to it's it's more challenging to function it's it's um it's a more of an uphill climb to just do regular things and that's what we want to really hit today okay um let me see let, let me just read some of your comments yes okay i love this okay this is nella oh look at your cute dog okay yes sherry i think that is a great idea schedule but it has to be realistic that's my issue cramming days of work in in the morning yes okay we're gonna get to that all right um okay so when you're creating a da daily schedule uh, part of that is having routines and listen I am now on the fifth floor. I'm in my fifties. Okay. And my kids are now out of the house. My daughter went to college. If you used to watch me when I was live, love latte and my daughter was like eight years old. Okay. Well, she's not eight years old anymore. And I'm not eight. I'm not that same younger woman than I am that I was. Okay. And you've, you, um, your um your life your uh or our lives what's um our day-to-day -day schedule it, it just keeps changing so before when my daughter was young then my kids were in grade school you know my whole my whole schedule was around them okay even work was around them business was around them uh extracurricular activities church everything uh, meals <laughs> were were really around their schedule it was really a family schedule OK, but as they grew older and as they had different, they started, you know, uh, learning how to drive, <laughs> which was terrifying. Ugh, you don't know how much anxiety I had when they both started each time they learned how to drive and learning to go on the freeway. I was just like, I let my husband do that. And I was just let, let me know when you get back home because I just didn't want to know. OK, but uh and then they started, you know, as they started to drive and they go out with their friends and then they went off to college. And now my son is actually moved to the East Coast. So we, you know, don't see him as often anymore. And so my schedule changes because my environment, the people I have to take care of, my day to day life is different. But each uh, chapter of my life, each season, I still had to learn how to create a schedule that really supports what I want to accomplish and how I want my home to be and um, the kind of life that I want. And so that's what, that's why I really believe in having a schedule. And part of those are routines. So we had our morning routine, how to get to get all ready the night before so that we're ready to uh, get to school on time. And there's times where earlier um, in their grade school years, we walked to school and then they transferred school. So I had to drive them. And so when they when I stopped having to drive them to school, all of a sudden I have like an hour free every day <laughs> to myself. And I'm like, what am I going to do with that hour? Right. So a routine is a sequence of actions regularly followed. OK, let me repeat that. It's a sequence of actions regularly followed. OK, it's so like when you wake, you, you have built in routines already. You don't even have to write it down. OK. But when my kids were younger, we had this sheet on the fridge or in their room, morning routine, you know, get up, use the bathroom, brush your teeth with the little icons and, you know, graphics and all that. But you have a routine already built in. It's there. And then maybe you have to create other routines until you really get the hang of it. OK, so example, when we wake up in the morning, you, you get up, you use the bathroom, maybe you brush your teeth, make your bed, go in the shower, whatever, or maybe you shower at night. You know, all our routines are different. Maybe you get a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Maybe you have a piece of toast, avocado toast, or you don't eat breakfast at all like me. I don't eat breakfast, but I do love a good cup of coffee. And then I get to work or maybe you pray. Maybe you check your emails, whatever it is you do. There's something in the morning that you kind of follow. And if you look into that and you say, you know, I'm going to repeat this type of habits or routine into other things, whether it's cooking dinner at night or your night routine. And so I did that through the years and I learned um, kind of the things that worked for me and didn't work for me. 
Okay, another um, definition of routine is a fixed program. So example, I settled down into a routine of work and sleep. And I like that word, I settled down. You know, it, it really, you kind of just, you, you go into it. And it's uh, similar words are procedure, pattern, or groove, like, you know, like you're in the groove. Okay, let me see some of these comments here. Uh, I hate paper. I need lots of organization in that department. I'm with you. Okay, paper is my nem is my arch nemesis. It really is. Okay, but I'm striving at work. Yes, yes, this will be up. Uh, I hope uh, this live stream is recorded that I can watch later. Yes, it should go up after we're done with this live stream, and we'll be going uh, for an hour. So relax. Keep commenting. Think about the things I'm saying, maybe even the things that people are saying in your um, in the comments. Uh, see, 808 Blessed One has been with me for a long time. Yes, I had, my kids are very organized. I helped them get organized. And you know what? They've carried those skills to now being, now my, my son is working. Uh, he's getting his master's. He's working. My daughter's in college. And they've, those are skills that I had hoped to teach them. And then they can add on to that. Um, so I taught them those skills when I was, when they were obviously growing up in our house. Mm, okay, I love this. Karen, thank you for commenting. I love your comments. My mom had that same anxiety when I was in my 20s. I've had to learn how to be balanced. Yes, when my mom was alive, we were a team. We got things done. Now it's just me trying to get my balance back. Oh, you're so sweet, Karen. All the best to you. Okay, and then 152 in Hawaii. All right. Yeah, you guys are back. <laughs> All right, the other thing is, um, oh, did I miss something? Okay, yes. Next is to, okay, yes, you got that, create routines. And now is observe how long it takes to do your routines and tasks. How long does it take you to get ready in the morning? How long does it take you to get to work? How long does it take to get your kids ready? How long does it take to get to school, right? Those things uh, which when you, I actually take note of how long things take, okay? And you maybe you do this, or but I've actually uh, written it down and anytime something is new, like um, there's a, I go to church every Sunday and the venue had changed. And so I had to really know how long does it take to get from our house outside, pull the car out, get into the car, drive to the parking lot and walk into the auditorium. Okay. So that was like a new thing I had to time. And so hopefully I wouldn't be late. Right. Or how long does it take to um, wash the dishes, get the kitchen clean every every day? How long does it take to cook? How long does it take to do your shopping list and then do the groceries, get there, shop, come back, put the groceries away? Okay. And so sometimes we underestimate how long things really take. And so we're kind of scrambling or we run out of time. But I know that it takes me 30 minutes every single day to clean my kitchen. Why did I, how do I know that? Because I time myself for a few days in a row here for a week, let it go for a while, you know, and clean my kitchen, not time myself, maybe a couple of weeks later, time myself again. And I realized, you know, it really does take me 30 minutes, no less, sometimes a little bit more, but never less how I wish I could get it down to 20 minutes. Cause I was like, I'm going to get this done in 20 minutes. I don't care how hard I worked. I could not get it done in 20 minutes. So I said, you know what? It takes me 30 minutes. And then cooking. There are some dishes where it takes me 40 minutes, all the cutting and all that stuff. It takes 40 minutes to cook, clean, get everything back into the fridge or whatever I need to do, wash the dishes. And then there's some that takes 20, that takes 20 minutes. So on average, after um, taking notes of like, okay, if I cook this, it takes me this long. If I cook spaghetti, maybe it only takes me 25 minutes. If I cook this Filipino dish that requires a lot of chopping, it takes me 40 minutes, whatever, right? So then I've learned to use the instant pot with the pressure cooker and, you know, you use crock pots, all those things. Bake, I've, I've done it all, okay? And what it comes down to is 30 minutes. 
And so what I want to encourage you to do is to start taking note of how long it takes you to do these daily tasks. Okay, so this one I've got to enlarge because you have got to see this. All right. Okay. Let me take this out, you guys, so you can see the whole thing. Okay. So this is where we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to hone in. Okay. We, everybody listen to this. This is like the main thing I want to share with you today. There are 24 hours per day, right? Everyone has the same number of hours, seven days per week. That equals 168 hours. I hope I did my multiplication right. Okay. And if you've ever watched um, Dave Ramsey or listened to him, right? He talks about name that dollar. He goes by a zero-based budget. He wants you to say, this dollar will go to this. This dollar will go to that. Okay. And so what I had noticed was that I actually do that with my time. I've been doing this since I was in college. I have named my hour and it's just become a little bit of a routine for me. And like I said, when things change in my life, like a venue changes or my kids get older or they have a new extracurricular activity or they started driving, now we're empty nesters, whatever, I've always named my hour. And I'm very aware of how many hours I'm using up and what I'm wasting. And sometimes I, I like to waste time. I just want to relax. And I don't call it wasting. I call it relaxing. Self-care is the new health care. <laughs> okay. Then you have to designate the hour. It's a zero-based schedule. Every hour has a designated job to do. Okay. Doesn't that make sense? If you wake up, let's say 6 a.m., 6 to 7 a.m., you're not cooking dinner. Well, most of us may not be cooking dinner. Uh, maybe you're doing laundry. Maybe Mondays at 6 to 7, you're doing laundry. Well, you name that hour. It's your hour. It's your house. It's your home. It's your family. It's your lifestyle. But for me, you know, 6 to 7, I name that hour. That's when I, like, slowly wake up. You know, when I'm up, I, I'm up, okay? Then I do my whole routine, and then I get to work, okay? Okay, sorry. I'm trying to catch... Okay, good. My math is correct. All right. Okay, let me get back to your comment, um, Prince Freak. Hey, nice to see you. Okay, so hope that makes you think of stuff. Okay, don't please don't be overwhelmed by this slide, but I really want to show you this. Okay, these are my hours every day. These are like always every day. Sleep, sleep, eight hours. Okay, let's. I admit sometimes it's five, sometimes it's six. Sometimes it's 10, very occasionally. I wish it was more. But on average, I sleep eight hours, okay? My work is about eight and a half hours a day. And I actually work six hours, uh, six days a week. Uh, I get ready. It takes me about 30 minutes. Now, this with the lashes and the foundation and like I actually blow dried my hair, that's 45 minutes. I wish it was 30. I've tried to get it down to 30, just like um, cleaning the kitchen. I can't get it down to 30. But anyway, thir 30 minutes to get ready on a regular basis. Next, I clean the kitchen. I mean, I'm sorry, cleaning, cleaning the kitchen takes about 30 minutes. Okay, so on a regular week, okay, see right here in the blue, the teal, 56 hours of sleep, 51 hours of work. Okay, some of you, you don't work for 51 hours. You work 40 hours. Maybe you work part-time, whatever. It doesn't matter. You have to name your hour. If those are the hours you work, then put it in, okay? Four and a half hours a week to get ready. So I added here nine because Sunday mornings for church, I do try to get look a little bit better. And then another day of the week, if I'm going out with my husband for a date or we're having family day, whatever, there's a little bit more time there. <laughs> do you like my lashes trisha i was debating if i should put lashes or not but i like lashes okay all right clean the kitchen three and a half hours so that is a total of 117.5 hours out of the 168 hours okay okay then on a regular week because it's not every day every day i'm not doing errands Every day I'm not spending time with family or friends or doing church stuff or traveling somewhere. But in general, in a whole week, 
these are the hours I put in errands, three hours. That includes sometimes where I do, um, I order things online. Okay. Family, whether that's my family, that's my immediate family, dates with my husband, that's kind of in there, friends, um, whether it's like a dinner with as, as uh, like a small dinner date or whatever, or just hanging out with a friend for coffee, church, travel time to get to places. So that's a subtotal of 141.5 hours. And remember, we have 168. So I still have 26.5 hours remaining. Okay. Yeah. Um, or divide that by seven days. That's about three hours and 70, uh, 375 hours per day. That's three hours, 45 minutes. Okay. So that means I have three hours and 45 minutes, three and a half hours, four hours, whatever you want to say. Okay. To do something for myself, my family, my spouse, my kids, family member, you name it, friend, my home, work, fun, relax, self-care of my community okay because all these other things sleep work get ready cook clean kitchen okay those those can't be skipped those have to be done and then um these things you know they're kind of you know just like with a budget they're variables some weeks you know i might be spending five hours doing errands so then i would have less time let's say for friends um if you get what I mean, it's a variable budget. Okay, let me look at uh, some of these uh, comments here. Okay, where was... Hmm. Okay, this one is funny. Today took me 30 minutes to put on the magnetic lashes. Listen, I was doing magnetic lashes for a couple months or a few months, who knows? It like tore all my lashes out. So anyway, I'm back to the glue eyeliner. That's just, you know, just letting you know. Oh, thank you, Trisha. This is mind blowing. Definitely got to start naming my hours. Yes. And then what you're going to see is that you actually have time or, you know, and we're not going to be wasting time. Like we're not going to be wasting money, right? We're going to name that dollar. We're going to name that hour. So even if I say, you know what, I have four hours to myself, I'm going to go to the spa, I'm going to have a massage, you know, now budget comes into there, or I'm going to sit in my backyard and just enjoy reading a book and be good with that and not think like I got to be doing something all the time and start another project. Or, you know, you do have time to spend with friends. You do have time to spend with your family and to do more to do more of that. Um, okay, so this is, I got to show you this. Steve is my husband, okay? He needs to have his own hour. <laughs> uh, maybe that will be my next poll, if he actually needs that hour. Exactly. That is so right, Karen. We're like, where did the time go? But it's true. Where did the time go? My kids are now, he's an adult and she's in college. I'm like, oh, where did the time go? And I tell you, my overwhelm, you guys, if you've been feeling overwhelmed, I haven't been feeling just more like overwhelmed. It's just I've been feeling sad because my house is empty. It's like me literally all day long. And then when my daughter was here and, you know, even though my son had moved, at least I know around four o'clock, you know, after school and whatever, she would be home. But now it's just like nobody's home. My husband gets home late from work. And so. It's, it's a new season in my life and I'm learning to work through that and deal with that and, and prop myself up with the things that I need to do to take care of myself. <laughs> okay, next. So now um, when you're, you've, you've created a schedule, you've created a routine and you really take stock of how much time it takes to do these routines and tasks, the ones that you have to get done, the fixed stuff versus the variable, then you can really start living in your reality self. So if I have two kids and I'm working 51 hours, well, I don't think that would have been possible. I would have just only worked 40 hours. Then I have a whole 11 hours more to 
um, use those hours, whether it was their extracurricular, helping them with projects and homeworks. So you see what I'm saying? It's like you get the full picture of what's really happening with your time, because I think a lot of our overwhelm in not getting organized is finding the time, right? You're just like, oh, look at that big pile of clutter or look at all those clothes and I can't even see what's in there, right? And you just you just get overwhelmed, but it does take time. It does take time to get organized. And I'm gonna show you later the, the recent project I've done and let you know how much time I've it took to, to get that decent, you know? Okay, let's see. All right, let's see. Uh, P-R-N-C-F-R-K, it actually stands for Prince Freak. Um, <laughs> love the name. Naming my hours sounds like a plan. I didn't accomplish anything today that I wanted to do. Thank goodness I set an alarm for this or, or I would have missed out on these golden nuggets. Oh, thank you. I love you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. So Karen, uh, Karen says, ditto. It's just me now. And sometimes my nephew and now my uncle is in nursing home. So this is a different, this is a new season in your life, or maybe it's been for a while taking care of an elderly relative. It's a different type of time because not only the physical time you have to take to take care of them, but the emotional the emotional wear it takes on you. And I understand that, you know, for those of you who have taken care of uh, parents or relatives that uh, need more um, um, help or need more focus, need more attention, um, it does, it will take that time. But you know what, if you, um, um, you know, it's rewarding. It, it's something, it's a season in your life. And we we give the best and we we do our best for it for that time for that season in our in our relatives life and especially for us who are you know as we we grow older you know those responsibilities will be put onto our lap and that's why it's important to me for you that we really take hold of our schedule and really see like what are our time wasters where can we uh, really take this time and put it here so that we uh, can uh, function better or we just have the home that we, we're hoping for or we're wanting, okay? Um, so now you can live in your reality self. So my reality self now is that I am an empty nester. I, I, do have, I don't have to spend an hour taking my daughter to school. I have that time. I've had that time for a little while. But, um, you know, now it's me and my, <laughs> my husband. And I remember, by the way, when I was a young married woman, uh, someone told me, listen, the, this is, I don't know if this is a side note, but it, it's just popped into my head. They're like, you have to stay friends with your husband because the second highest divorce rate happens when you're 25 years married. So my husband and I are 27 years married. And they say, why? Because now the kids are out of the house. And then you look at each other and you're strangers and you're like, who are you? Right. And you, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to get into it, but that had always been something that was on my mind. And literally <laughs> when my daughter moved out to go to her dorms, I literally did that. I looked at him and I'm like, oh, wow, it's just me and you. And he had said the same thing. He's like, oh, honey, it really is just me and you. And it's, and it's, it's been fun. We've, you know, we spent like uh, five days in Vegas because he had a conference. Um, he has a Pilates studio, which by the way, I'm thinking of doing a live video of showing you his studio because I'll show you in the slides later. That's, that was my, the, my recent project. But anyway, we, we had gone to Vegas and it was just like, yeah, it was just, I mean, we've been on dates the, the years that we've been married, but it's different. It's just, it was just like, getting back into that, you know, it's, it's me and you <laughs> till our, you know, we get gray hairs, which, you know, you can't cover anymore with, with color, hair color. And that's the season in my life. You know, now my, my parents are older. We're actually going on Sunday for my dad's um, birthday. And they're, they're just, you know, they're just at that stage in their life where, um, you know, things are different. And, um, the, the the emotional stuff you know goes with that whenever we have changes in, in our lives and 
but one thing you can control is to really um you know create your schedule and create your routines and then when those get moved here and there you know you 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 pull yourself back up and you move it and but you've learned that skill of really getting your schedule to support you okay not you a slave to your schedule and a slave to wasted time but letting that serve you and serve you the best okay so reality the world or the state of things as they actually exist okay so my reality is i'm here in the house it's me by the way my my dog passed also in early february so i actually thought i would have my dog with me molly but now it's just me and so i was kind of um kind of okay like okay i'll be an empty nester but i still have molly and then that happened and so it's, it's, it's been sad, but, you know, I'm learning. I'm getting, um, you know, trying to embrace the good stuff and getting through that. Thank you. Um, uh, the other thing, the reality self is that, you know, my husband has a business and I support that business. And I've been supporting that business for 16, 16 years. And I don't think it's going away. Like There's a time where I thought, you know what, there'll be a time when I can hire someone to do the things that I do which is, it's not, it's not heavy. It's not like big deal. I mean, it's not um, hard. Okay. But I just, I wanted to kind of separate business and, and personal life with him. That was what I was aiming for. There's a time where I was there at the studio, like as the front desk person. And I was like, okay, after about a year and a half, I'm like, this is not working. It's just like, everything is, there's no separation of church and state. Okay, We had to separate business and personal life because it was just like, OK, so when I got out of, you know, physically being the front desk, I was still I'm still doing the accounts payables, receivables, you know, kind of the operations, payrolls, things like that. And there was a time where I thought, OK, I'm going to I'm going to find a way to pull away and, you know, let him really like take care of everything, hire someone, you know, do all the hiring, whatever. But you know what? That's not the reality. And so um, and it's fine. You know, I finally embrace like, you know what? this is good. This type of partnership, this level of partnership with him is actually kind of good for us. We've learned to get into that groove. And so it, it is what it is. And that's, that's the reality. I support my husband about five hours a week for his business. And I embrace that. And I'm very happy to do that. Sometimes I'm not happy, but some, most of the time I'm happy. So that's part of my reality. So ask yourself, what is reality for you? What is your situation in life in your home right now? Are you taking care of an aging relative? Do you have young kids in your home? Okay. Uh, are you a new mom? Are you newlywed? Are you single? You know, do you have a new job that requires more time in the beginning? Um, do you really want to learn to cook? And uh, so those all will, will uh, require your time and your tasks and your routines. Uh, thank you, Trisha. Okay, so Katie Reed said boundaries. Okay, so maybe expound on that a little bit more, Katie, on your um, on the comments. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, let me take this out. So similar words are real life, actuality, truth, and so very. It, you know, things are from the simplest thing like you know what it really takes me thirty minutes to clean the kitchen to um, harder truths, you know, of our lives. Like we're taking care of aging family um, or we, there's, a, there's an illness that we are dealing with. You know, those, those are real stuff and we have to, we live in that reality so that when you realize that and you embrace that, you don't have to look over there on, um, you know, these magazines, especially, you know, even some of these organizing magazines or whatever, or organizing shows on Netflix and be like, oh, how I wish my my books were color coded and, you know, how my whole kitchen is white, you know? So my reality right now is I'm, my kid is in college. I'm not going to renovate my kitchen to the kitchen that I want. It's still the same kitchen from 1994. And I still show that to you on my videos, 
Okay, this house was built, I believe, in 1994. And so when you embrace the reality and you learn to support yourself and make the best of it, you know, that's when you're really going to be able to do more. And in this instance, what we want to do more is to really get our home organized. Okay. And then one thing I do too, as far as schedule is in the beginning of the week, whether it's Sunday night or Monday morning, that's kind of, I don't like to think about the next week on Saturday. So I start on Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon, evening. I think about what are the top three things and I write it down that I need to get done this week. Okay. So let me give you an example. This week I knew, hold on, let me drink my mango juice. Take a sip of whatever you're drinking. If it's Chardonnay, have a sip for me. Did I look cross-eyed right there? Okay. So this week I knew I was going to do this live. Okay. And it takes time to get these slides together. I think it actually took me about, um, or, you know, just to think through what am I going to talk about, find the right slides and the right picture, pictures. It took about three hours. Okay. And so, but that was one of my top three this week is like, I got to prepare for my live stream. Okay. Number two is I have people, uh, I have one, two, I have three couples coming over for dinner tomorrow and we're going to have Korean barbecue. Like, Korean. Okay. And so I got to go to the store to get all the stuff. I have to set up, um, you know, cause we have like the grill. I have, I have those at home, so I've got to set it up. And so I knew that that's like important. Okay. Those are my top three things. And then my third thing was, um, something to do with work. Okay. Like this has got to get done this week. So those are my top three. Now, are there other things to do? Yes, of course. There are a plethora of things to do. But instead of looking at all like the 20 things I have to do from those 20, what are the top three things like this has to get done? And you know what is, is really interesting? Even if I don't get the other 17 done or the other 10, the fact that I got the top three that were most pressing on my heart or on my mind, I feel like I've accomplished something. And I do that week in, week in and week out. And so I suggest to you like even this week or maybe starting next week, write down the top three things you need to do. Maybe it's that phone call that you need to make to that friend or to um, your coworker or to the teacher of your, your uh, child at your child's school. You know, there's something that, you know, if you could get this done, it, it just takes a lot, either it takes burden off of you or, you know, it's something that will be the first step to the next step. Okay. Um, maybe it, maybe it's a bill you have to pay. Um, maybe it's, uh, cleaning out your purse, whatever it is, you, the top three things, and you're going to see how effective that is. Okay. So the next thing, um, did I do that? Yeah. Write down your top three to do for the week. And then this is the last, the last thing I wanted to, um, share about, cause we got about 12 minutes. Okay. Choose one space that is your starter project. So just it, no, don't skip. Okay. Don't skip like, okay, I'm going to start organizing. No, you've got to create your schedule, create your routines, figure out how long the task takes. Okay. Because even a starter project like this of, um, cleaning out one surface of your desk or one surface of maybe a counter in your kitchen, or a surface on the bathroom vanity, that could take you an hour. That could take two hours, okay? But it's a starter project. I have never done a cluttered space that takes less than an hour, okay? Um, uh, well, let me read this. From Karen, my reality is to simplify, realize my limits. Yes, chronic illness here for life. So I try to adjust, 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 learning how to conserve energy. That's beautiful, Karen. And you know what? Those are the hours that you are naming. It's 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 self-care, it's um, conserving energy. Okay. And then this one from Katie uh, Reed. I was just agreeing with in regards to the separation of church and state. Having that separation in life, I find very necessary for me. That's funny. Okay. 
um, Prince Freak, I believe my purse is my most organized area of my life. Is that true? Or <laughs> you're being facetious. Okay. All right. All right. Um, okay. Let me show you another area. A starter project. This could be a starter project. Okay, when you realize, you know what, I have three and a, three and a half hours. I have four hours extra every day. Okay, one of those days, I'm going to start organizing one shelf in my linen closet. One shelf in my entryway closet. One shelf in my kitchen cabinet. That's a starter project. Okay, and then you have, what, what did I say in number um, three? observe how long it takes to do your routines and tasks. So this is a, ta a task. How long did it take you to clean that one shelf, to declutter that one shelf? How long did it take to declutter that surface in your bathroom vanity? Okay, that's what I do. I even take note of how long it takes me to organize anything, whether it's in a client's home or in my own home, I know when it's like I have to do my fridge. I'm doing my fridge actually today. I've let it go a little bit, but I'm not doing a deep clean. When I do a deep clean, it takes two hours. And I, like I said, I, I try to get around it, make it better, faster. It doesn't happen. But today I know looking at it, this is going to take me an hour, okay? Because I've all the notes I've taken of how long things take. Okay, here's another starter project. Your, your socks or your underwear or your lingerie, you know, getting to this, like, I don't care if you have a hundred socks or 50 pairs of socks to go through each one of them and to get rid of them and to decide which one you want. Maybe that's probably an hour or two. And then to get it into a bin like this, and maybe you don't have a bin. So you have to order it on Amazon and then wait for it and get in there. But Something like this starter project is going to take you about one to two hours. Let me know in the comments below if, you, if you've done small organizing projects like this. And Oh, it's true. Okay. Prince Freak says yes. Good job. Okay. If my kitchen or dining table is a mess, I feel like my house needs to be set on, set on fire. I have an open concept living space, and it just needs to be clean all the time. I agree with you. You know... One thing I always have to have clean is my entryway. Because when you enter my home, if you've seen my videos, it's like, boom, there's my, there's to the left, uh, you know, going upstairs. Here's my living room and my dining room. Like you just see everything. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I think I have one more starter project. Okay. Here, your silverware drawer. Okay. Junk drawer. I wouldn't really consider that a starter project because there are so many things in there sometimes that, it, it might be hard making decisions, but a silverware drawer is a starter project because you know exactly what's supposed to go in here. Okay. You don't, you don't put the screwdriver in here. You don't put the, um, the Ziploc bags. Um, you don't put your number two pencils in the silverware drawer. You only put silverware. Now, if you don't have a lot of space, like here, you would put silverware and maybe some of your serving uh, utensils like these spoons and the the salad stuff and you know uh, those bamboo things okay but the the reason this is a starter project is because it's pretty clear what needs to go in here so you have less decision making that as opposed to something like a junk drawer or or even an entryway closet okay oh yes friend junk drawer is a day project <sighs> I don't want to get into that because I've done my junk drawer a few times and it's been all kinds of hours. I also, uh, Nella Laz says, I also threw stuff out. I didn't need 40 pairs of socks or 112 pairs of shoes. Waste of space and energy. Okay. So now with those starter projects, keep that in mind. Okay. Along with um, naming your hour. And I want to show you my recent project as we um, close out here. Okay. So as I mentioned, my husband has a Pilates studio. And for the longest time, I'm like, I'm going to get to your studio. I'm going to get to your studio. So I finally did. I was saying that all year. Finally did. And these are the before. I'm not trying to throw my husband under the bus. If he's under, 
if he's been thrown, then anyway, he's he's back up. He's not under the bus anymore. But he knew I was going to show this. Um, so I don't work there at all, as you know. Okay. But as you can see, I've tried to organize this before for him. And what I did before he, um, I re, I, you know, I'm going to go in, I'm going to organize. I asked him, okay, what did not work for you? Like, I thought it was very organized. What did not work? And, you know, he told me like, uh, bottom line, there's too many things that he needs to put in here that he didn't know where to put them. Okay. So example, one of the things was the batteries. Look at here. He has the batteries with the keys. Okay. So he's got double A batteries. And then in this other drawer, he had the triple A and then these, I think there's C batteries. So what I said was, okay, well, would it work? What, so what I knew was like, it will work for him if I separate the batteries, even if there's two here, I could get a different container and make it smaller. So I had to separate each type of battery, double A, triple A. That's pretty much all the battery sizes he has. He definitely needs a place for his coins. Like that was working for him. So it became this. And then you could see that I changed the um, drawer liner. Okay. Then here, the same thing. What was working? What was not working? Well, he didn't need this big old stapler. He barely staples anything. So I ended up getting a smaller one. It sits on his desk. And then um, see, you can see the batteries here. Uh, they were taking temperatures for a while. <clears throat> he does need the lighter because he does light candles sometimes uh, in the winter time. And so it became this, okay? And so like, yes, he does need these light bulbs. He does like this uh, hydration water, okay? Does have some staples. And then... Let's see, before, this is kind of blurry, but he just had a the top drawer here full of paper. And then we also fixed the top of his desk. So it ended up like this, where, yes, he needs these, like, um, muscle um, lotions or something, salt salves, I think that's what you call it. Yes, he does, he does test people with their golf swings, and he doesn't hit the golf ball necessarily. But, um, yeah, I got my label maker. That's actually for me. And I might be labeling later, okay? And then, oh, child, let's look at, oh, this was like, this is what drove me crazy. Like, So here's the before, okay, just like all over the place. And then I fixed up um, that. And I actually have a video clip, so here, let me show you. I did a lot of tying and things like that. Let me show you one. Now, wires for me are never pretty. I can make this prettier, but bottom line is off the floor and all the plugs that he needs are there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I don't want to throw my husband under the bus, but this is, and I was just like, how do you have your amazing clients come in and like just see this hot mess. Okay. And so what happened was I said, just send me pictures. And when he sent me the pictures, I did a little fire under me to get this done. Okay. So he was my, um, he was my client this past week and all of this, and I haven't even shown you the other room, but this took six hours. Okay. And so this is the after, let me take myself off. All right, so you can see here, I still have some paint to take care of. We got a new green bench. Uh, I got this new stuff here to lift up the two screens that he wanted to keep. I have all his pencils, I mean pens here, and this rotates, actually. Uh, there's the stapler and then the tape, you know, just smaller, it goes underneath. And I like this option because it elevates above the desk so that he could put something underneath. So when he comes in, he could actually put his cell phone and wallet here, which he, no one's gonna grab his wallet, but sometimes he puts his cell phone, he has paperwork here during the day. And now when you actually walk into the, he didn't take a picture, but I do wanna show you this space sometime in a video later, later. Uh, when you walk in, because here's the front door, we're on the second floor. 
I tell you, I'm telling you, it feels so good. And I'm sharing this not to show you what I can do, but to show what you can do, you know, because you saw my schedule. I have all this, these things I got to do, but these are what, this is one of the projects I wanted to do. I didn't know how long it was going to take, but while I was the, I went in for probably like four days, an hour, an hour, two hours, uh, two hours. Okay. And I still have a whole closet that that's a whole big, that's a whole big project I still need to do, which is kind of over there. Okay. But I'm showing this to you so that you could see like when I understood my time and the time, um, I mean, I, I thought I would need about eight to 10 hours. Okay. But I was able to take less time this week to say, you know what, I'm going to use hours that I normally would have for this, whatever, you know, like, let's say my, my work and put it into really getting this project organ, getting this organized for, um, his business. Okay. But if I just looked at that, you know, you saw the before pictures, you know, I, I would be just like, it was, I, I, I got overwhelmed. You know, I was feeling like, oh my gosh, when he sent me those pictures by text, but there's nothing I can do in the, in the moment. I had to look at my schedule. When can I put time? This is, and I was going at night cause you know, there's clients and he's working during the day. So I can do it dur during the day. So we were late at night, seven to eight, eight to nine, whatever. There's one time I went from eight to 10. Okay. But look at the result. <clears throat> this is just one part. Like I haven't even showed you all the drawers and the cabinets and that other space. Okay. Um, yes. Nice. So yes. Cords are the worst. Nice. Thank you. Men see function, not beauty. We see function, none. We see beauty. We see function and beauty. Yes. Good point, Karen. Okay. I'm just reading this. Thanks people. Okay. Exactly. I agree. All right. So guys, that, uh, I think that's it. Yeah. One more thing. Uh, yeah. So that, let me just, um, summarize or just go back over. What are you overwhelmed about? Okay. So if it's your daily schedule, create a daily schedule, create routines, um, observe how long it takes to do your routines and tasks and start living in your reality self, write your top three to do uh, for the week, and then choose one space that is a starter project. Okay, guys, so I did wanna leave by letting you know that I do now have my merch store open. I will be adding more stuff. Right now it's a lot of like travel things, as far as like, um, here you got Barcelona, or uh, we'll travel for sushi and things like that. But I will be adding more kind of um, sayings about uh, organization and things, but just wanted to point that out. So I hope you enjoyed or learned something. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you didn't enjoy, sorry. <laughs> um, I will be back here uh, the first Thursday of November and I will be having a guest and we're going to be talking about being organized for travel. Okay. And then in December, I have a special guest that you may know. I'm not going to divulge it yet. And then in February, I have another special guest that's in this uh, space of organization and homekeeping. Same with December uh, that you're going to you're going to love. So thank you so much, Nella, Katie, Trisha, Karen, all of you on the live stream who uh, didn't make comments. Thank you for being here. Prince Freak, uh, 808 Blessed One. Let's see. Who else do I have here? Did I say Katie Reed already? Um Yes, make sure if you want to look back at the notes, it will uh, the live play, um, the replay will be on. So, uh, Michael, oh, thank you, Michael. I didn't see your thank you. Michael said you're awesome. Thank you. Uh, anyone else I missed? Okay. All right, guys. Enjoyed help me to put things in order and prioritize. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you so much for joining this live stream. And uh, for those of you watching in the replay, thank you for being here. Hope this helps. And I will see you in the next live stream. Bye. Make sure to um, um, give your loved ones a hug and see you soon. Bye.